Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on our 2017 LX570. In the last video, we installed the rear coil spring spacers and also the rear EE off-road AHC shock spacers to get the springs back where they should be as far as effective spring rate and the AHC shocks back within the range of motion that they're designed to with the uh, truck lifted up a couple inches higher than it was from the factory. This is part two of the video series. And in this video, we're gonna install the rear pan hard bar relocation bracket. It's a bolt-on, not a weld-on. Uh, it's made by Dr. KDSS. It's called the BOTCK kit, bolt-on track bar relocation kit. Um, here it is. It is a combination of two brackets. This is the main larger one. This is the one that goes into the cradle and some simple hardware. What you're gonna need in addition to what comes with the kit, you're gonna want an impact to make things a little bit easier on you. You're gonna want a wrench, some ratchets, some impact sockets, and then this is what I'm using for a torque wrench, my digital one, um, any kind of torque wrench you have that's fairly accurate will work. Then you'll also want a bungee cord to keep the uh, pan hard bar, the track bar, out of the way while you're doing the work. You're also going to want some blue Loctite. I'm using the 243 medium strength. As always, the links to all the tools I use, the parts, and even the Loctite. I'll put them down in the description so you get quick reference if you want to grab them for yourself. Now I'm doing this in a garage on the floor, and I have an LX570. So I've got it put in high mode, so it's lifted up as much as the HC system will allow. Get me some extra clearance underneath it. If you have a Land Cruiser, you probably want to use a floor jack and get it jacked up a bit um, so that you've got some extra room to work underneath it. The same bracket does work on both the 200 series Land Cruiser and the LX570 from 2008 all the way through 2021. Just as a quick refresher from the last video, what we're trying to solve for here is the pan hard bar angle in the back. In any solid axle truck, you're going to have a pan hard bar in the back. And essentially what it does is controls how far this axle goes this way or this way and keeps it somewhat centered while you're driving. Now, normally the pan hard bar is fairly flat or very close to it when the truck is settled down. And as it goes up or it goes down, this side is generally uh, isolated to the frame and the other side, at least in this truck, goes up and down with the axle. And as it goes down, the angle changes. As it goes up, the angle changes. When you lift the truck, the axle's going further down. So your pan hard bar ends up like this, even in a static location, when you're not squatted or lifted or doing any sort of articulation of your axle. And it ends up getting that feeling in the back of the truck when you hit bumps in the highway, especially going around turns, it kind of feels like the truck is doing this kind of like it's floating in the rear end. And it causes even more problems when you're off uh, camber to the side, when you're off-roading, it could create some dangerous situations. So in order to get that pan hard bar back to where it's sitting flat, what we're going to do is use that bracket that we've got uh, on the uh, axle side, and it's gonna bring that pan hard bar up on that side to where it's flat again, as it was designed to operate originally. Let's take a look under the truck. So here I'm on the driver's side. That's the side that's attached to the body. And as you can tell, the pan hard bar is angled downwards. And what we're gonna do is put the bracket on the other end of it, that's over there, and bring that side up and hopefully get this as flat as possible and parallel to the ground. So let's pan out to the other side. This is the other end. And this is what we're gonna be working on for the most part. As you notice, there's only one bolt holding this on, right? So this bolt here is gonna be what we remove first. Then we'll take the track bar, the pan hard bar, and we'll bungee it up against the frame up there. Just find a spot, probably just go right over this section here, anywhere really, and uh, use a bungee cord to hold this thing up and out of the way. Then we'll put our bracket in there. The other thing we wanna do is disconnect this sway bar. This is the sway bar right here. It goes from your sway bar end links there, wraps around here, makes a big U-shape across the truck and ends up over there. So the bottom of our bracket is gonna go between this mount here and the sway bar bracket. 
So there's two bolts here, one here, one here. I'm gonna undo those, lower that sway bar. I'm gonna undo this guy and then pull that track bar up and I'll be right back. Got the sway bar disconnected, so now it can come down. You also have to disconnect the bracket on this side, which is right here, it's just two bolts. So undo those and then the sway bar will swing right down. And just so you can get the right tools, the bolts for the sway bar brackets, they're 14 millimeters. And this bolt here, that's a 24 millimeter. Now, if you remove this bolt and it still feels like this guy doesn't want to move, the other thing you'll want to do, and this is usually with a factory track bar, if you don't have an aftermarket one, you'll want to come on this side and just loosen that nut. You don't need to take it out, just loosen it so that we don't have as much tension here and the bar can move free. That guy is out. I had to use a little hammer just to tap on it upwards. And now that it's out, you can tell it's nice and loose. It's freed up. So I'm gonna bungee it up. Now that that is up and out of the way, let's get back to work on the bracket. Got that bracket in there. I had a little bit of a hard time. I actually had to bend this top section out a little bit. It looks like whoever put this on over tightened it or maybe it just got tight over the years. Who knows? That's on. You want to put your finger into this hole, check all the sides, make sure you've got smooth contact uh, amongst all the sides and that the hole is centered. Next, take this large bolt that comes with the kit, put it through, and just make sure that you're catching the threads. We are here. So it's lined up with the hole on the back side and the front side. Now I'm going to take this guy out, put a few dabs of blue Loctite on the threads, and then put it back in, and I'm just going to Put it in maybe you know six seven turns just so it holds things in place but i'm not going to tighten it up now that that's in there you want to get the rest of your hardware ready you've got your large bracket you've got a large nut two smaller 10 millimeter bolts and then a larger bolt these small bolts they're going to replace the factory ones that were holding the sway bar bracket on so you want to make sure that those go down here, but they're gonna go over this bracket once it's on. And then this larger one is gonna go through the side. It's gonna go through this side here, and it's gonna go through this hole on the bracket right there and into the other bracket. Then finally, this large nut, you're gonna use along with the factory bolt that held the track bar and it's gonna go on the back side right here, depending on whether you wanna use the upper hole or the lower hole, and the factory bolt is gonna go through this way. Now I'm over on this side. So this middle bolt, you wanna take that out, the one that was there, and then line up this larger bracket, put this bolt in, again, with some Loctite. Make sure you don't tighten it up, leave it loose. Now we wanna put our big bolt back in again again just a few threads all right now that those two are on the next thing we need to do is put our sway bar bracket back on down here i'm going to put this side on first before we do that side just so i got a bunch of wiggle room again you want to put some loctite on these bolts you want to use these 10 millimeter ones that came with the hardware kit and your factory bracket right over the bushing make sure everything lines up and as with the other two bolts don't tighten them down just get the thread start got those two on now before we start tightening any of this up we got two more steps we're going to put the bracket back on the sway bar on that side and then we're going to come and put the track bar into these holes and pick either the top hole or the bottom hole, whichever one gets us uh, to where the track bar is the most level with the ground. Put the bolt through with the nut on the back side. Then once that's done, I'll show you the order that you got to tighten everything up. I went ahead and torqued those down to spec. Now we're over here. I took my track bar off the bungee. It is loose. And as you can tell, it falls right in between these brackets because we haven't tightened any of this, right? You don't want to tighten it before you get everything in place. And I've got two mount points I can choose from. I just eyeballed it, held it at the top one, held it at the bottom one, tried to see which one would get me closest to being parallel to the ground. And I think it is 
the bottom one with the amount of lift that we have. Uh, right now, using the bottom hole, I'm, uh, I'm still a little bit angled, but I'm still in high with uh, the HC setting in high and it doesn't drive around in high. So I think this bottom hole is gonna be the one up here, gets me almost exactly parallel to the ground while I'm in high. So if we ever lift the truck a little bit more, I'll probably move it to that top hole. But for now, we're gonna leave it at this bottom hole. You wanna grab your factory bolt along with the nut that was included, put a little bit of Loctite on there, slip it through the hole and get that nut started on the back. Now that we've got that on there, the last step is important. It's the order in which you tighten all this stuff. First, you wanna to torque this guy down. Second, you wanna to torque that guy down. Third is these two. And last is this one. If I remember right, I think this is 120 foot-pounds, 120 foot-pounds, 50 foot-pounds, if I remember right, or maybe it's 45, and then last, 120 foot-pounds. Use a torque wrench, make sure you're doing it right. Got everything torqued down, back on the ground, and I set the height back to normal instead of high. And if I take a peek underneath, it's hard to see, but... It is about as parallel as can be to the ground. Very happy with the end result. There's that side over there. It's hard to see from this angle. But uh, that's, that's that. If I wasn't filming and making this video, even with this being my first time, I think it would have taken me hmm, 30 minutes on the ground without a lift. So pretty easy to do on your own. Anyway, hope you enjoy this video. Love y'all. See you next time.